Welcome to another session of the Worldwide Tuk Tuk Tournament. I'm Gerrit Reininghaus. I'm your host, but I will also drive today because there's just one competitor, but a very difficult competitor. And she has proven already to be among the best Tuk Tuk drivers in the world and tries to challenge me. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> May the best, best Tuk Tuk driver win. May the, the best or the most dangerous one showing teeth on the street. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Today we race through the city of Johannesburg in South Africa. Because we haven't been there yet. And tuk-tuk drivers can drive all over the planet and even on different planets. We'll come back to that later. So here we are. The Tuk Fast, Tuk, uh, tuk Furious tournament as part of the Gauntlet Community Open Gaming, which is happening this weekend, 17th of July 2020, in the middle of a pandemic, and it's our way to escape um, social distancing, those who still practice that, hopefully, and also to grow closer as an international community. And so I'm from Germany, and Monica is with me from Romania. And we play at a convention which of an organization founded in the United States. So it's as international as I love it, my online gaming, and there we go. This is a short game, and so I should stop talking and instead talk about the game itself. All right, this is also new to Monica, and therefore I should be careful how to explain this best. Uh, we will be Tuk Tuk drivers in a race. This is a role-playing game in which each of us is a driver of a tuk-tuk. And the circuit in town isn't fixed yet, but we create the circuit while we are playing. And we do so by going on Google Maps and dropping this little yellow figure, figurine somewhere into the town. Maybe at an interesting place, maybe we zoom in a little bit, and if we have found something we want to share, then we send the link to the other person, and that's me, and I share my screen so everybody can see where we are. And then we describe what kind of obstacle is waiting for us to, to drive us there. Uh, to see how well we perform at this obstacle then depends on a dice roll. Um, this is a purely random thing. If we play with more people, then you can like assign a little bit of difficulty to those who think who are in favor in this situation and those who will be challenged for sure. But with the two of us, we don't need this. It is much easier and much faster even because we are playing too fast, too furious. <laughs> and so if you roll a high number, then you earn a flow. Then your tuk-tuk is like in full flow. If you roll a low number, then some trouble happens at the obstacle and you reduce your flow by one. We have a play mat where we can see how we move back and forth. I can share that in a minute. Yeah. And if you roll something in between, then um, it is um, a middle result. That means there's no change in your flow. Then as we come closer to the end, after each of us has described two obstacles, we come to the finishing line. And at the finishing line, we um, then have to push our luck, which is like a board game mechanic where you say like, um, you can set your target number yourself and that is your speed. So this is how fast you go to cross the finishing line. And the highest number, wins. So if I say I have speed 10 and you say you have speed 9, we we'll reveal that at the same time, so we don't know what the other is saying, then I win because I have the highest number. So why shouldn't you just say 1 trillion? Because I would say 2 trillions. No, but um, because, <laughs> sorry, I'm, 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 I'm all about bad jokes today. I don't know why. Um, but instead, what happens is you need to roll 2d6 two six-sided dice uh, with, um, and add your flow, which you have accumulated over the race, and you need to beat your number. If not, then you were too fast for your driving skills and you crashed somehow. 
And since this is a story game, we put a lot of emphasis on describing what is happening and we do this over the top. Like this can go fully over the top and we can just have all the fun we want. If we prefer to play it in a more serious tone, we can also do so. We will just see how it goes. And maybe you have something like a, a love story developing over the course of a game. You never know. It's too fast, too furious. That's all. Well, there's one thing at the beginning of the game, you need to prepare for being, uh, for your ride. And um, there's one more role to get a starting flow, but that's a minor thing. And I can come back to that later. But now we need to think about which driver we bring with us. So we create a character and that is very simple. You need a name and what you are famous for. And uh, that is actually all. So I give it a start and I'm Rudy, the former racing horse. And I brought Rudy with me today. Woo, nice. So he is Rudy. <laughs> and Rudy is will be the driver you have to compete against. So um Rudy doesn't have a driver license yet. Oh, well, not oh. for South Africa. So I will help Rudy a little bit. Like if we get into police control, I'm still young. But Rudy is actually driving. Uh, yeah, actually it's, actually it's Rudy driving, yes, <laughs> for sure. And what I'm famous for is um, I won the long distance swimming competition as a racing horse. Yeah. In Switzerland. Ooh. Yeah. Across the Alps. Okay. Yeah. So Do you have an idea for a character? Uh, I have. So um, my character is Agatha. I am a pumpkin farmer. And um, uh, why I take part uh, into this race is that I want to um, uh, make uh, make my pumpkins famous worldwide. So everybody, I'm going to uh, in the tuk tuk. I'm going to have some of my prize pumpkins with me for uh, uh, for promotion. And um, um, yeah, I am famous in my farmer community for. Um, um, winning the village fair for the best, uh, most uh, well-grown pumpkins. And um, uh, why I take part in the race is also because that uh, every time I fail to win the first prize, I get this feeling of existential dread and um, uh, I don't um, uh, know what my uh, sense of existing is anymore. So I need to push myself and uh, uh, get fast and furious with the two. Wow, existential dreads. <laughs> yes. Who knows? Maybe. Maybe you have um, you have fans who just want to see your existential dreads and just don't want you to win. Who knows? <laughs> we will see. All your fans are all pumpkin fans. You never know. Very cool. Okay, cool. Then we are ready for a start in our race. And this means we need to think about how we pre- oh, The pumpkins! The pumpkins! There they are! <laughs> Very cool. The tuk-tuk is also in there, but it's covered by the pumpkins. Yes, obviously, yes. Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm afraid that some of these pumpkins could be really, really dangerous. <laughs> well. And I will eat them all. <laughs> oh, it has the same color with the pumpkin. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> there we go already about love stories. Yeah. Uh, so we need to prepare for this race. And to prepare for this race um, means we give each other um, a situation, like a flashback to the evening before, maybe the minutes just before the race, maybe an important conversation we just had before we left um, out on the street, maybe on the plane to Johannesburg, who knows, anywhere, anytime before. 
something which tells us how you prepare for the race. But leave it open, how well it goes, because then we pick up dice and roll and see how, how well it went and then finish the flashback. I make the start. So I'm, I was just uh, getting ready and onto my, our business class here with Rudy on Lufthansa A380, sitting here with a bottle of very expensive wine, already celebrating our victory. Because what better way there is to celebrate a victory of a race you haven't won yet? Because it means you will for sure win. This is called destiny, right, Rudy? Oh, yes, I think so too. We did the same for the swimming competition. It went so well, 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 well. I couldn't find the finishing line in the end anymore. But I still stole the trophy. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay. And now I take 2d6 and I roll them. And I rolled a 10. You have to believe me. Really? And <laughs> that means I start with two flow. And now we have a racing map. Um, our map. I share my screen again. And I can move my tuk tuk. <laughs> on two flow. And there we go. And this is where I start. So, and I finish. And I tell you, and I tell you, this trophy is still with me. And you, did you know what I found in this trophy? I found an extra gallon of super speed turbo nitro, which will give us an extra advantage at start. And let us start with a big fire blast just right coming out of us. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I am um, aboard this ship, which takes me to my uh, ranch from my ranch in, uh, let's say, uh, Oklahoma, and um, um, I uh, have uh, traveled um, uh, on the sea towards Johannesburg, and I am in my cabin, uh, holding. Uh, obviously, I took uh, aboard the, the pumpkins. And uh, I am in my cabin carving in the pumpkin um, a shape of a tuk-tuk. And this is uh, supposed to show me the determination and the ambition I need to make this symbol um, a symbol of my victory and to make uh, my pumpkins uh, famous worldwide. Wow. You make your own trophy. Incredible. Do you have 2d6 or do you... Uh, yeah, perfect. Yeah. Then you can roll for yourself. So more than seven means one flow, more than 10 means two flows. Okay, let's see. So, uh, four. Oh, you start with zero flow and we don't move forward what you have. I'm sorry to say, but uh, it's not okay. the season. It's just not the season. Pumpkins. <laughs> Need to wait until October. Damn, yeah. I knew I should wait some more. You know, this is what I do with your pumpkin. That's murder, it's pumpkin murder. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we are at the, uh, at the starting line, at our start. I'm next to you. And Rudy is jumping in the last moment into my tuk-tuk and off it goes on the course. And behind me, a huge fireball blasting straight into your face. But you know, like uh, oven vegetables is also very tasty, isn't it? How, how is it? How, did, how do you get on the street? Mm. So um, first I have to recover from the taste of sweet, sweet pumpkin pie. So I uh, eat a little piece, uh, wipe my face, eat what, whatever I can, 
and uh, this uh, pumpkin taste gives me a lot of uh, energy and the strength and um, then I um, um, race ahead and grab the biggest pumpkin I can find and throw it into the head of your horse. Whoa! Okay, there we go. Up into the street and down the road and this is the moment when we need to go for our first obstacle. And uh, I start with looking for a first obstacle and I think I have found something which is like we are in the street fashion district of Johannesburg. I uh, give you the impression in a second, I will just share my screen. And you can also in the meantime already look up something on Google Street View, which you can share uh, and give us as an obstacle. But first of all, here is my view. This is where we are now. Uh, we see like all these uh, micro buses. There are um, like um, buildings where people live in, plenty of flats to let for sure, many people on the street. Uh, so it's very difficult driving uh, terrain. And importantly, here you can see all this street fashion. And part of the circuit, obviously, is that we can't pass without like doing a little bit of shopping. We also need to help the local economy and to support them a little bit. So what we both need to do is like passing by there and do some perfect fashion shooting with all these wonderful little clothes. Like I see like a lot of jeans, but I'm sure there's also some bling bling and other things necessary. And there are like hundreds and thousands of people looking out of this building on us. Um, and we could be the next Vogue cover image if we are just good enough. And this is the obstacle. So what we both now do is we roll 1d6. And when you look at the overview sheet, if you roll um, four or more, you gain one flow. If you have one or less, you lose one flow. If you have the highest flow at the moment, you roll with a disadvantage of minus two. That goes for me. I need to subtract two from my die roll. So I roll, I roll a six. Six minus two is four, which means I still gain a flow. And I jump one ahead and now I'm on free flow. I told you I'm unbeatable. <laughs> um, how do you, how does it go for you? Let's see. Um, Seven. Uh, you only roll one die. Ah, only one die. Okay. Yeah. Five. Five. If you have four or more, you gain one flow, which means you're now on one. Catching up. I think so. Okay, now we both give our description of how we pass there. First of all, I'm there. You see this fashion show is already full stage. And it's now time also for Rudy to dress up. And the advantage Rudy has is Rudy can put on two trousers, one before and one back. And so Rudy has like trousers in gold in front and in silver on back because Rudy is first and second goes silver. And, but we are so good, we take gold and silver position at the end of the, ra uh, <laughs> the race and nobody gets any other trophy. And uh, in the end, Rudy also has like a tail, and on this tail, Rudy has like six or seven rings. Can you see this? So perfectly suited for any street party. You can go on. Okay. How is Agatha doing? Uh, so I am going to. Um, oh. sorry. This is not good. Okay. Um, so I am going to. Um, use um, the clothes on this street in order to uh, make uh, uh, as many um, figurines uh, like straw puppets with uh, pumpkin heads and um, um, jeans and overalls. Ooh. So I'm going to uh, race, uh, squeeze myself with the tuk-tuk through the middle of this uh, fashion street. And also, uh, I'm going to uh, pay extra if uh, the helpful vendors can also dress up uh, the, uh, the straw uh, pumpkin uh, figures. 
cheetah. Yeah, that looks wonderful. Four legs, really, silver and gold, and I'm a cheetah. <laughs> <laughs> but look at this pumpkin decoration. How shall I beat this? Okay, we have forever changed the landscape of Johannesburg because from now on then they use pumpkin models. This. <laughs> okay, now do you have like a street view you can share with me? And I will drop that in and share the screen. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, wait a sec. Mm -hmm. can drop the link in the chat or do you share your own screen? That's up to you. Let's see. To the streets. Uh, give you a street view of uh, yeah. Zuber Park. Oh. oh, that's how it's pronounced. Uh, Let me drop the little guy onto the street. Mm -hmm. I can find him. Yeah, uh, on the bottom right. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's not sure why it's not there, but I'm gonna find it. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, yeah, so, um, host disabled participant screen sharing. Oh, yes, yeah, there we go. So I'll try and uh, give you maybe an um, a the link. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, but yeah, it should be the park, but it doesn't look like a park. Well, we'll see. So, uh, huh. Loading. Loading, loading. So I do the screen sharing. Okay, there we go. Okay, so uh, it was supposed to look like a park on Google Maps, but somehow <laughs> It only looks like some uh, railroad in Johannesburg. Yes, lots of skyscrapers and lots of railways. But here behind, maybe. Yeah, maybe this greenery should be the park, I hope. Yeah. 
but we also have lots of railways. So what obstacle is waiting for us there? Um, well, the tuk-tuk um, is um, going to uh, find a shortcut and try to go through the railroad, but unfortunately a couple of trains are uh, exactly at that moment passing uh, through the railroad. Uh, that is dangerous. Okay. Um, do you want to go first or shall I go first, describing how we pass this? Uh, we first can both roll our dice and then we see how well we do. That makes sense. Oh, I rolled a zero because I need to subtract two because I'm still in the lead, so I will lose one flow. It goes very bad for me. Uh-huh. And oh, just one dice. Just one. Six. Whoa. So you gain a flow, I lose one flow. For you, it goes extremely well. For me, it goes really bad. So I'm first there because I'm in the lead. So I am there when the trains come and Rudy is like seeing that the train is coming, like jumping out of the tuk-tuk. And I'm hit and like, boom, gone, gone am I. <laughs> like going with that train, the train right behind me, like cartoonesque, like, like, whoa. And it is carrying the tuk-tuk until the next train station, where all kind of passengers in the next train station enter the tuk-tuk and now sitting there and it, are ex expecting me to bring them to the next train stop. And Rudy is back alone on the road and is seeing you coming closer and closer. We lose our lead. <laughs> So Rudy is now out of the tuk-tuk? Yes. So um, um, I um, um, accelerate, I speed up next to the trains. Um, I uh, pass uh, to towards Rudy. Um, I grab Rudy and put him into the tuk-tuk and together we uh, manage to find this ramp kind of thing or in the middle of the railroad and jump on top of the wagon and uh, race on top of the wagon um, until uh, we reach the first bridge and then we get on the bridge. Wow, okay. So you more or less rescued Rudy. Yeah, Rudy's Good. safe now. Rudy's safe, thank you. Not on the rails anymore, totally paralyzed. I lose the flow. And Agatha but is not. that Rudy should prepare himself for only bronze pants. For first <laughs> in bronze only. Okay, there we go. Same position now. And now it's my turn again to look for a potential um, new place on the map. And I have something in mind. Uh, should be here, it should be somewhere here. Maybe here. I'll drop in here. And again, again. Ah, now it comes. Yeah. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer to load. And I go full screen. I'm very curious what I have discovered here. Because this is far in the outskirts. But it's not a place nobody has ever seen before. But it's something very common. It is a stop at our sponsor, KFC. Oh. Yeah. There's no chance to go through such a race without like doing some nonsense for sponsors. So we've seen a fashion show already, okay, but that was like for local economy. KFC is not exactly local economy. I mean, it's a franchise, but anyway. However, they have free Wi-Fi. They have like fantastic chicken wings and um, Coca-Cola in like a gallon size. And uh, they have a big parking lot and a friendly crew and they are very happy to host us. And 
um, you're always welcome. And as you can see, even all the world, way, uh, world famous tuk-tuk drivers, they make a stop here for lunch. And I roll 1d6 and you can roll 1d6 to see how it goes. I'm not in the lead anymore, but you are neither because we are on the same. We have the same num flow. Um, but I rolled a two, which means no change for me. I have a five. You gain one flow. No, you are in the lead. Good. Okay. So for you, it goes much better. Um, I think I go still first, describing what is happening there. So we need to make this stop, which is good because it means I can um, repair the, the, the stuff which has broken on, on the tuk-tuk from this little train ride I've taken. And now I'm back there and uh, Rudy has ordered already um, 20 burgers, uh, vegan burgers for sure, because vegan is against eating animals. <gasps> I am, yes, I can tell you I am. Eating animals is like terrible. Shh, shh. We have KFC. At KFC, they that's their business, eating animals. <laughs> and Rudy is upset and makes takes a big shit just in the middle of the restaurant. And I, to hide this, drive the tuk-tuk just on top of it so that nobody can see it. But suddenly there are all the journalists coming and getting closer and closer and it smells like horse shit, but like terrible like horse shit. I'm surrounded by all these people and I think I am not the farmer person here, but that should be Agatha. How is Agatha doing? Mm, Agatha is uh, getting very strange looks because of uh, poor hygiene suspicions. And uh, <laughs> um, Agatha is, uh, I'm trying to um, uh, uh, convince uh, KFC to uh, buy my pumpkins and um, uh, make a partnership and do some pumpkin pie and um, introduce pumpkin into the menu. Um, however, uh, now um, um, they started uh, getting out some um, uh, fr air fresheners and uh, uh, sprays and um, um, they um, um, spray me into the face and uh, uh, I get a bit um, uh, confused and angry about that so I uh, press um, the accelerator on the uh, tuk-tuk and um, um, go through, um, through the window and uh, race forward the um, um, leaving KFC behind and yeah. the fast lunch or so stays behind. It wasn't expect exactly what the, the sponsor expected, but definitely something unique. And the World Wide Tuk Tuk Tournament is always good in delivering like the unique experiences. Fantastic. We come to our last obstacle. Do you have something for us? I do. Monica. So, um, Let's see. Uh. I will show like where we stand at the moment. Agatha ahead with three flow and Rudy with only two flow, but just very close behind. Can still make it. Rudy, we will win this race. No chance we will lose against a pumpkin. <laughs> we get many pumpkins. Yes, you can have all the pumpkins. I bet our tuk tuk against Agatha's pumpkins if we win. <laughs> Don't promise him what you can't deliver. <laughs> but I will. At least. 
sometimes. Okay, I have a link, but it's to an indoors location. Good. That might also work. It's uh, we're stopping by Nelson Mandela's Memorial House. <gasps> wow! Historical places. Do you have a link, or do you share the? Uh, I put it in the chat. Ah, okay, it's already there. All right. It's loading. So we can wait for it to get it to load. Oh. Oh, with all the personal items and everything. Mm -hmm. Cool. Oh, very, so very tight space, yeah. But important to visit. We couldn't go to Johannesburg without visiting. <gasps> With a cute dog. So the obstacle is that there is a very large queue of visitors blocking the street in front of Nelson Mandela's house. And um, uh, there's no way that the tuk-tuks can uh, pass uh, through it. So we need to right around it through the house yeah <gasps> okay with this old steel oven yeah okay let's each roll i i have you need to subtract two so it's minus two what you roll because you are in the lead i win I one flow and the minus two three then you I neither lose nor gain flow. Your flow is the same. And I gain one flow. So now we are head, head on head again. 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 Yeah. So you have been in front. So maybe you want to start describing how you make it through the house. Okay. So um, um, I um, get... Uh, I get off the tuk-tuk um, because the queue is already very long. Um, I take my time uh, visiting the museum. Um, I give, um, and then um, after doing that, I take some pictures. Uh, the queue is still very so long outside, so nothing, I can take my time. And then after visiting everything, I give a pumpkin to um, everyone who uh, is standing outside the, the line and um, um, promising them the pumpkin in exchange of moving their butts out of the way. And this is how the, the street uh, opens up. <sighs> Perfect. Okay. Well, well. For me, this experience was very different because when I was standing with Rudy at this house, thinking about history, apartheid, about nowadays racism, oppression, also of people like Rudy, suddenly the ghost of Nelson Mandela is standing in front of us. No way. <laughs> Nelson, it's you. Yes, my dear friend. I'm here to guide you to the finishing line. You have proven to be a, a good human being. You have endured a lot. No, no, Nelson, you endured a lot. And you are such an impressive... I shouldn't win this race. You should be the winner. Get in my tuk-tuk. Together we win this race. We win it for you. Be on the driver's seat. Come, just we make some space. Yeah, that's fine. Sit with us. Come with us. We will make it. You will be part of the worldwide Tuk Tuk tournament. This will be your remembrance. And so we have another guest in our Tuk Tuk, just in the back seat. Is Nelson Mandela now with us? As a ghost, nobody can see him except us, but we know he's there. It's going very well. So, I can feel, um, uh, 
ghostly, uh, some foggy, uh, cold kind of presence, but I don't know what it is exactly. Yes. Some jingles sometimes. We are very close to the finishing line now. So now it's time to speed up. And we speed up uh, in that, that we decide how fast we want to go. So fastest tuk-tuk wins. However, you need to beat the number, which is your speed, with two dice again, plus your flow. We are both, I should like update that, um, we are both on on free flow, I think. Yes, I, ga I gained one, you stayed where you were. So we roll 2d6 plus three. So the average number would be 10. So if you, if you say 10, you have a 55% chance of making it. So a safe bet is something like eight. A courageous one is 11 or 12. And 10 is al already quite a risk, but doable. So we both enter in this document, in this shared document, where you see the dash, we enter the number at the same time. It's best when you write it elsewhere and then copy paste this in there. Or we use the chat. I think we can also use the chat. The chat is easier. So if I write in here 10, for example, that would be the number. So we write the number and press enter at the same time. So I go, Oh, and I, yeah, at the same time, yeah, more or less. Um, I didn't change anything afterwards anymore. So I'm, I'm, I'm safe with a nine, and you are on, on, on risk course with an 11. You are super fast. So. You only race once with the tuk-tuk in Johannesburg. So absolutely. Okay, so now take 2d6. You, because you are faster, you are first at the finishing line. Roll 2d6, add 3, and see if you can beat 11 or more. So 11 is already uh, good. Okay, so I have 9 on the dice. And, uh, but we add the flow, don't we add the flow? We do add the flow. So you are at 12. Which means you make it over the finishing line and you won the tuk-tuk race. Describe us how you make it over the finishing line. Okay, so um, um, at the last moment, um, the tuk-tuk um, breaks apart because one pumpkin falls out of the tuk-tuk and um, uh, the front uh, wheel kind of... Uh, um, splits apart, but I jump out of the tuk-tuk on front, uh, on top of the wheel, and I balance on it as an acrobat uh, oh. through the finish line. Wow, with style. Now let's see how I make it. I'm a little bit slower. I roll 2d6, or oh, Rudy, you can. Last roll, you can. I rolled a six plus three is nine. So I, my speed is nine, I also make it, but a little bit slower. And when I go closer to the f finishing line, I think like, Agatha is so fast, we should speed up. And Rudy says, go, go, go. But in the back of the tuk-tuk, a voice says, hey, Rudy, it's not always about winning. This could be dangerous. You have a long life in ahead of you. You're a good horse. Go a little bit slower. And I go, go fast. And suddenly, Rudy is secretly, without me noticing, put one of his foot, how do you say with a horse? Shoe horns, whatever. This leg, the horse last shoe. Hmm? horseshoe, horseshoe, out on the ground. And there are like sparks flowing in all directions, but I don't see that. And it's like seriously pushing me down the limit. So I'm, I, I am, can't go that far anymore. And I'm like, ah! And we only make it second. But Rudy seems happy. <laughs> because Rudy gets pumpkins now. At least one. I'm not sure 
it, that's good for Rudy. Also, Rudy should give back the gold pants and only wear silver pants. <laughs> he gets the pumpkin. Okay. Thank you. That was our Took Fast Took Furious worldwide tournament. And we finish here and say thank you very much, audience. Thank you for visiting Johannesburg, the wonderful town of Johannesburg, and having spent a nice little afternoon in you and providing such a perfect and wonderful racing circuit. We have a winner, Agatha, is it? Agatha and the pumpkins, the prophet of the farmers of this world, leading them into a brighter future. Any last words, Agatha? I did it for the pumpkins. Um. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye.